morning. It's good to see one out this morning to receive from the Lord's Word and Sacrament. If you have your bulletin announcement sheet, I ask you to please take that out as you are so doing. I also ask you to please fill out the blue book at the very end of the pew and pass it on down. A couple announcements for today, actually one for today. It says quarterly voters meeting at 1215. Uh, my understanding is that uh, for the voters assembly, we need 20 voting members. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I know with the weather, it's pretty sparse here uh, this morning. I do know the other LCMS churches in town did cancel. So, uh, you know, weather and travel has been kind of iffy today. So we'll play, the, play that by ear, as they say, after the service today. Um, as we look to the rest of the week, a couple things to mention. On, when, on Tuesday, excuse me, uh, Dying to Donate Starving Rooster Fundraiser. Uh, what that is about is this, is on Tuesday night, go to the Starving Rooster or pick up some food there. And uh, not only do you get some good food, but a portion of that money will go towards our LYF youth. And so that'll be on Tuesday, uh, starting at 4 o'clock. I know last time we had probably 20 to 30 people there just eating and time of fellowship and uh, having food. And then part of that money uh, then goes back to our youth. So that'll be on Tuesday. Um, if you do get food, I, my understanding is you have to make sure to mention that it's for the LYF. So make sure to do that if you... Uh, happen to attend or pick up food on Tuesday. Wednesday, men's Bible study, uh, confirmation hangout will be our last confirmation this Wednesday. And uh, with that in mind, next Sunday will be confirmation Sunday. Now, very briefly, with confirmation Sunday next week, Lord willing, if there's another snowstorm, right, uh, we will have confirmation Sunday, 9.15. We have a confirmation presentation that's open to the whole church. We have questioning of the youth, a video to watch, and presentation of their Bibles and so forth. And then the divine service with communion following that. Um, also, though, next week, and keep in mind, it says Friday and Saturday. It's actually misprinted. Uh, it's not the Houston wedding. Uh, that was this last Friday and Saturday yesterday. We had the Chappelle wedding um, the, uh, for the Chappelle family. Uh, so we have that wedding on Friday night and on Saturday of this coming week. So keep that in mind. There's some other information on the back of your bulletin, uh, including the confirmants, their names, if you're so interested, uh, for this year for Confirmation Sunday. Are there any other analysis that I may have missed or overlooked at this time that need to be mentioned? Well, today is Easter 2. It's the second week after Easter. And we hear two very familiar texts, especially that one from Ezekiel 37 of, of Ezekiel prophesying to dead bones. And then we hear Jesus coming and speaking, not necessarily prophesying, but, but proclaiming. The words, peace be with you, not to dry bones, but to fearful disciples. We'll hear more about that in our readings this morning, as well as the sermon. But before we do so, our opening hymn of invocation is hymn number 464. Hymn number 464.
ask the congregation to please stand as we turn to the top of 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. It printed on the inside of your bulletin, sung to the tune of C. Like newborn infants, alleluia. Long for the pure spiritual milk of the word, alleluia. Sing aloud to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. In distress you call me and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And with honey from the rock I was satisfy you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Like newborn infants, alleluia. Long for the pure spiritual milk of the word, Alleluia. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Congregation may be seated. The Old Old Testament reading for the second Sunday of Easter is from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones, and he led me around them. And behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied and I was com- as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone, and I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath. And breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place in your own land, place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken And I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 John, the fifth chapter. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe, God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. 
Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Congregation is asked to please be seated as we sing the hymn of the day, hymn number 470, hymn number 470.
In the name of Jesus. Amen. That evening, when Jesus came through the heavy wall of the house and passed the locked door, what he found right there in that house, in that room, was a bunch of dead bones. Just like our Old Testament reading about a valley full of dead and parched bones, well, the disciples were not much better off. The disciples were afraid. They were afraid of the hatred of the people that put Jesus on the cross. They were afraid, thinking that they might be put on the cross as well. And so they had carefully locked the doors and hid in the house out of fear. Yes, fear. Keep in mind, though, that this was not the first time that they had feared for their lives. Several nights before, yes, several nights before, in the garden, fear scattered them. As the temple guards came and arrested Jesus, they feared, they ran, they scurried. And so the point being, that night, as they huddled in the house with locked doors, Jesus came right into their midst. And as he did, and as he did come into their midst, he came in the midst of fear, in the midst of dread and terror, right there. Now, as we have heard before in previous sermons and Bible studies, fear is the opposite of faith. Fear is not a virtue. Fear is not healthy. Bluntly stated fear, well, it's sin. Indeed, it is sin. That is to say, the Bible itself speaks about fear over 353 times and specifically says not to fear over 85 times, over 85 times indeed. Now, even medical science does not speak positive about fear as well. Fear has a way of affecting all aspects of our health, from our blood pressure to hormones and even our adrenaline. Fear can affect the cerebral part of the mind as well, the brain, making our mind foggy and causing slowness in good judgment. Fear can also weaken our immune systems and even damage our stomachs through things such as ulcers. And so fear not only breaks down our body, but also has a way of making us collapse inward on ourselves. When fear comes along and it strikes at us, Well, and we live by fear, well, we end up protecting our body. We pull within. We hunch over. We cover our chest. When fear comes at us, we close our eyes. We plug our ears. Indeed, when it creeps towards us, we go into our houses. We go into our bedrooms. We shut our doors. We pull the blinds shut. We shut our doors. We lock them. And we even, yeah, we even pull the covers up over our heads. We also put up emotional and spiritual walls, metaphoric walls, if you will. And in the end, fear causes us, get this, to cut ourselves off from anything that might be a threat. To cut ourselves off from anything that might be a threat. It results in us isolating ourselves from everything and everyone around us. It leaves us alone with ourselves. But my friends, being alone is not what it is cracked up to be. You see, we should be more afraid, get this carefully, hear this carefully, you and I should be more afraid of our own hearts than we are of everything else around us when we're left alone. Permit me an opportunity to explain. In the late 1800s, a quote was being circulated quite frequently, a quote that was circulated that was attributed to Martin Luther. Now, truth be told, as we look through history, and we look back to the primary sources, well, Luther probably did not say this quote. Indeed, he probably did not say this. Nonetheless, it is such a good quote that it's worth repeating and worth hearing. It goes like this. I am more afraid of my own heart than of the Pope and all of his cardinals. I have within me the great Pope, self. Listen to that again. I'm more afraid of my own heart than all of the Pope and all of his cardinals, for I have within me the great Pope, self. In other words, while there's a lot of fear in this world, things that threaten you and me, ultimate safety is not blocking everything else out, resulting in you and me being isolated by ourselves and alone. That's not safety. The reason is that there's just as much to threaten us right here in our own heart as there is outside of us in that big bad world 
out there. Now, dear friends, please keep in mind, <clears throat> please remember, yes, please remember that sin is indeed in the world. We do not deny that. Sin is in the world. But sin also springs forth from where? From our human hearts. From within, Jesus says, comes evil intentions, wickedness, and pride, and slander, and so forth. The list is endless. This is why Jesus tells us that we must deny ourselves. There are indeed things out there that we fear. But my friends, there is much more to fear right underneath our nose, our human hearts. Right here beneath our human nose, right here close as can be our human hearts. So as we consider this, we're in quite a predicament, aren't we? Fear causes us to retreat, to, to pull within, to go inward for safety, to build up walls. But then when we do that, we're, we're not completely safe. In fact, when we do that, we're not completely safe from that which is inward, the sinful heart. We're threatened by that which is outside, and then we're threatened that which is in the inside. We're threatened by the big bad world, and we're threatened by that corruptible heart at the center. What is a person to do? As we consider our reading from the Gospel of John yet again, it's quite amazing to consider what happened. You see, the disciples were lousy friends. <laughs> they were indeed. They were lousy. They were very lousy friends. In fear, they abandoned Christ in the garden. And here they are again. They're locked up in a small room, living by fear and not by faith. One could almost say that they were trapped by fear or paralyzed by fear. They were bound up. And as we consider this, we have to remember, too, that Jesus did tell the disciples everything that took place would occur. Yes, he did. Christ promised the disciples that he would bleed, that he would die, that he would be buried. And he also promised them the good news that he would rise again on the third day. <coughs> Nevertheless... Nevertheless, the disciples did not live by faith, by the promises of Jesus, but they lived by fear. And so Jesus had to come to them. He had to come to them. And get this, when he came to them, he was not mad. That is right, despite them huddling in that room with fear running through their veins, fear running through their minds, fear permeating that room, well, Jesus, he was not angry. But he came right into their midst. He came to them to give them peace. He came right there into their midst to chase away fear and to free them with faith. And dear friends, this is exactly the same thing that Christ does for you and for me this day. Baptist saints, hear this loud and clear. Fear is not a virtue. Furthermore, we cannot offset fear with our own abilities, with our own plans, our own schemes, and our own ideas. Fear is not overcome by you and me pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps. It simply does not work this way. Sure, you and I can somehow think we can eradicate fear by our own willpower and strength. But in reality, we're only keeping it at bay for a little while. It returns later on, and oftentimes with vengeance. But Christ? But with Christ? Well, when Christ comes, he replaces fear with faith. He chases fear away. For the disciples, again, for the disciples in our reading from the Gospel of John, Jesus, he came into their fear, into their trembling, into their dread and their terror, and he said four simple words. Peace be with you. And the disciples, they were given exactly what Jesus spoke. They were given peace. In other words, through speaking to them and showing them his nailed mark hands and feet and side, Christ gave peace, he gave quietness, he gave peace to their minds, he gave quietness to their soul, he gave rest to their bodies, and he gave them security by being the peace that they needed. By speaking Christ, he actually created faith in them, faith that swallowed up fear. The same thing, the same thing occurs in our Old Testament as well. Ezekiel, what does he do? He preaches, he speaks, he proclaims to dead bones. And simply stated, through speaking, through preaching, through proclamation, dead bones come to life. It's by the power of preaching, by the power of speaking, by the power of the word being spoken into those contexts. 
And so the point that is being made is this. You and I, every single one of us, we need a preacher. We need a preacher to speak the word of God into our ears so that faith is created, so that faith is strengthened. We need a preacher to speak the promises of God into our ears so that fear is not only chased away, but that it finds its end in faith. And so, practically speaking, practically speaking, if you find yourself in fear, stop looking at that which threatens you. Stop pulling inward. Stop coming inward and building up walls. Just stop. Stop everything. Stop and listen. Hear the word of God. Peace be with you. Yes, hear it again. Peace be with you. You see, if you are fearful of the powers of the world, fearful of the ideologies and the political forces at the world and the way that they come at you, fear not, blessed saint. Hear right now that your Jesus is bigger than the world. Yes, here you have been crucified in relationship to the world, and the world has been crucified unto you. And so you are set free in Christ from the fear of pleasing others and fitting into the little tiny patterns that they dictate to you. You are free. Peace be with you. If you are fearful of sickness and death, fear not, blessed saint. Hear this today, that the Lord is with you even when you walk through the valley of the darkness and the shadow of death. No matter how dark, no matter how deep the valley, you have a good shepherd and you are his sheep. You do not belong to the jaws of the wolf of death, but your good shepherd has claimed you. And your good shepherd, he will never let you go. No matter how dark again and no matter how deep the valley is, no matter how painful and how much dread the suffering is, no one can snatch you from his hand. And so do not fear. Peace be with you. If you are surrounded by hordes of demons, fearful of all hell breaking loose in your life, hear this. The Lord protects you from all danger. He's your light and your salvation. In times of trouble, he will shelter you, he will keep you, and he will place you on a secure rock. And so you shall not be afraid of the evil one, for the evil one is indeed, uh, indeed a defeated foe. Peace be with you. Baptized saints, your Lord has deemed it necessary for you to hear and to hear often, and God be praised for that. It is necessary for us to hear often. And so he places preachers into your lives. And these preachers, well, it's quite simple. They're to proclaim, to preach the word of God into your ears and into your hearts so that fear would no longer be central in your lives. These preachers are to preach the word of God so that fear would be chased away, that you would be forgiven of your sins and that you would live by faith, faith that clings to the Son of God who loved you, the Son of God who loved you and gave himself up for you completely. Blessed saints, peace be with you. Yes, peace be with you. Rest in Christ. Peace be with you. Amen. I ask the congregation to please stand as we confess our faith as expressed in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the church printed on the inside of your bulletin. Heavenly Father, your Son greets his disciples with peace despite their sins against him. Make us confident in his mercy towards us and gladden our hearts as he comes to us in his body and blood to forgive, renew, and strengthen us. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to die for our sins and rise for our justification. By his holy wounds, bless us with the forgiveness of sins and bless those sent to serve us in your name, that your church would be, would be built up in our time and in the ages to come. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, remember those who have wandered from the household of faith. Faithful to your promises, work all things in their lives to remind them of their need for your unending grace and steadfast love, that they might return to the faith and delight in your Son, crucified and raised for them. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as, you, as your Son's wounds brought gladness and peace to the troubled disciples, give your presence and comfort to the troubled in our midst. We pray especially this morning for Bill and Brenda, Brittany and Jeremy, Brian, Hari, Carl, Charlotte, David, Don, Dory, Fern, George, Isabella, Jameson, Jeff, Joellen, Callie, Karen, Marilyn, Mark, Maya, Philip, Randy, Robert, Roger, Ruth, Suzanne, and Travis. Comfort also those who weep with the blessed joy of Easter morning. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We implore you, O Lord, to sanctify and keep the congregations, schools, and organizations together with all of our people in the truth. Your word is truth. Preserve us from false teaching. Bring us to repentance for every place where love or zeal has faltered. Grant us and our children bold and steadfast hearts to remain faithful to this confession and church, suffering all rather than to fall away from it. And unite us with all Christians in a true confession of Jesus Christ, in whom the world has redemption, the forgiveness of sins. To you alone be all glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the offering music. As a way of reminder, the offering plate is at the back of the sanctuary. Offerings can also be mailed into the church office or conducted through the church website online. Please stand for the offertory on 781. We continue with the service of the sacrament on 160. Give thanks unto the Lord our God. Praise 
It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times, at all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you've had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
ask the congregation to please stand as we thank the Lord on page 164. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in the sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Ask the congregation to please be seated for the departing hymn. Uh, there's a brief change in this hymn number 475. Uh, hymn 475 for our departing hymn this morning. It is the gospel. We hear about how Christ, he comes into that fear, into that terror, and he speaks peace, and he does the same for us. No pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, no hiding from it, the threats in your life, but hearing always, peace be with you. Your Christ is indeed with you, and you shall not fear. Amen. <laughs> 